Hello. In this episode of CFTC Talks, we will discuss the recent joint statement made by Chairman John Carroll of the CFTC, Chairman Clayton of the SEC, and Chief Executive Officer Bailey of the UK's FCA on June 24th regarding the credit derivative markets. I spoke recently with SEC Chairman Jay Clayton and FCA CEO Andrew Bailey about opportunistic strategies in the CDS market. Afterwards, we issued a joint public statement. Our concern is that the continued pursuit of these opportunistic strategies raises a series of issues, including matters of regulatory and legal compliance, market conduct, anti-fraud, and broader public policy concerns. At the CFTC, we're doing some significant work in evaluating these strategies using our comprehensive current and historical data, unique analysis capability, and strong market intelligence. Our focus on these strategies is sharpening and intensifying. Now, the earliest of these activities date back to 2006. During the following 10 years, we have observed a total of six instances of similar strategies. In the last two and a half year period, we've observed 14 strategies, seven of which have occurred in just the last six months. It's well known that both the CDS market and the credit index swap market are significantly smaller than they were in 2010. Overall levels of trading liquidity and market participation are also dropping, reducing the ability for commercial hedging and price discovery. One reason for the reduction in trading liquidity may be the use of these opportunistic strategies with which we're concerned. According to the Bank for International Settlements, the notional size of the global over-the-counter swaps markets are around 500 trillion, though the risk netted size of the market is perhaps less than a tenth of that amount. Of the entire swaps market, CDS is a tiny fraction, less than 1%. But even so, the use of these opportunistic strategies in the smaller CDS market is having a significant and disproportionately large impact on the reputation of the broader global derivative markets. A few bad apples threaten to tarnish the entire barrel. I commend the work already done in researching these strategies by our staff, by the SEC, and the FCA. And I support the CFTC's continued approach in addressing these risks, improving transparency, accountability, integrity, and good conduct in these important derivative markets. Our work is just getting started. The analysis undertaken by staff indicates there are multiple ways buyers and sellers of protection can seek to artificially influence the contract's value to their benefit. The most straightforward of these strategies is either to induce a default or to alter the timing of a default. A protection buyer may attempt to establish an agreement with the reference entity that includes a requirement that a default is artificially made in the reference obligation. This could take the form of a small technical default at an otherwise healthy company that is part of a financial agreement between the protection buyer and the reference entity, or it could be the protection buyer working with the reference entity to have the failure to pay condition in a CDS contract trigger before the contract expires. In the latter case, a protection buyer might work with a reference entity to ensure bankruptcy is declared before the maturity date of a CDS contract. Regardless of which strategy is pursued, the protection buyer's goal is to guarantee a benefit from the CDS payout. On the other hand, a protection seller might establish a private financial agreement designed to prevent the default by the reference entity until after the maturity date of CDS contracts they have sold. In this case, the seller aims to minimize or to completely remove the risk of having to pay out on the contracts while allowing the seller to continue receiving premiums from the protection buyer or to write additional contracts within the time period without the risk of a payout. The mission of the Division of Enforcement is to protect the public and preserve market integrity by detecting, investigating, and prosecuting violations of the Commodity Exchange Act and Commission regulations. Misconduct in the credit default swap markets can undermine the integrity of the broader derivatives markets, including the market for credit default swap indices, and we are committed to enforcing the Commodity Exchange Act and our regulations in that context. We recognize that our derivatives markets are interconnected with markets around the world, and the division has made it a priority to coordinate with other law enforcement agencies 
both domestically and abroad. Our work to hold wrongdoers accountable includes not only our own market surveillance activity, but also close coordination with our law enforcement partners, including the SEC, the FCA, and others. We in the Commission plan to use all of our resources, including, where appropriate, vigorous enforcement, to deter misconduct in the credit derivatives markets and to ensure our markets are transparent and fair for all participants. Another strategy observed by staff involved actions undertaken to alter the amount of reference obligations at a particular reference entity. A protection buyer may seek to either add new debt to the reference entity as part of a private financial agreement or to artificially increase the amount of debt in a reference entity. Doing so increases the default risk of the reference entity, which drives up the cost of credit protection on that reference entity, ultimately raising protection costs. This allows the buyer to profit, even if no default occurs, by unwinding their original trade at the increased price. A protection seller, on the other hand, may attempt to coordinate with the reference entity for the repayment or removal of debt solely to reduce or remove the seller's risk obligations. If there are no further reference obligations related to the CDS, the seller can continue to collect premiums on their CDS contracts from the protection buyer without the risk of the reference entity defaulting. This is sometimes referred to as orphaning of CDS since the CDS no longer references any debt. The Division of Swap Dealer and Intermediary Oversight's mission is to protect derivatives market users and their funds by ensuring the financial integrity, fitness, and fair business conduct of derivative market intermediaries. This includes registered swap dealers. DSIO develops and monitors compliance with regulations affecting swap dealers, including business conduct standards, and division staff continuously seeks to promote market integrity. DSIO has been closely engaged with the CFTC's work on opportunistic strategies in the credit derivatives markets, along with the staff from the SEC and the FCA in the United Kingdom. In the credit derivative markets, swap dealers play an important role providing market participants with liquidity. We do, however, observe a small number of transactions where the swap dealer's engagement may require further review. Consistent with our mission, the division's work remains focused on improving market quality and supporting a framework for deep and liquid markets. Staff members also have observed that in some instances, after credit events have occurred, protection buyers will take steps to increase the payouts that they receive by affecting the cost of reference obligations that would be deliverable into the CDS bond auction process. CDS protection buyers can submit any deliverable obligation to the auctions, although auction recovery prices are typically driven by the cheapest to deliver reference obligations. This is because once a bond auction has concluded, protection sellers are required to pay protection buyers the difference between 100, or par value, and the recovery rate. This incentivizes CDS protection buyers to submit the cheapest deliverable obligations into auctions, because the lower the valuation at auction, the greater the payment to CDS buyers. This type of scheme can also happen in reverse, of course. Protection sellers can take steps to try to increase the cost of reference obligations that are deliverable into the CDS bond auction process. CDS sellers could, for example, employ a classic corner or squeeze in the bond market to prevent deliverable obligations from being delivered into an auction. If a protection seller buys up a large amount of the cheaper bonds in a corner and then holds on to them without delivering them to the auction, this could increase the recovery rate set by the auction process, thereby reducing the total payout the seller would have to make to protection buyers. Central clearing of swaps provides the derivatives industry with significant benefits from a risk reduction, efficiency, and operational perspective. 
Most importantly for the larger economy, central clearing at well-managed and well-regulated central counterparties, or CCPs, significantly reduces systemic risk. We are extremely satisfied with the industry's progress in this area, and particularly with the CCPs and their clearing members' efforts, and we continue to encourage and support these efforts. Our data indicate that in the credit derivatives space, credit default swaps on on-the-run indices, that is, the most recently issued indices, that are subject to a CFTC clearing requirement, have already achieved a 77% clearing rate. We are also encouraged to see take-up of central clearing in the single-name CDS space, which is regulated by our fellow market regulator, the Securities and Exchange Commission especially single-name CDS that are components of a CDS index that is also cleared. As we have undertaken this review, we have noticed that a very small number of market participants have tried to leverage this important industry infrastructure for their benefit. The CCP infrastructure significantly improves these market participants' efficiency as margin and other terms are with a single counterparty, the CCP. Clearing also allows these market participants to remove or reduce basis risk, resulting from having trades with multiple counterparties, improves their operating efficiency, and provides them with access to a broader range of dealers than in the uncleared space. And because of the anonymity and range of dealers in the cleared space, market participants can more easily keep their trading strategies and positions to themselves. As we extend this review, we will work with the CCPs and their clearing members to find effective solutions to handle potentially harmful behavior that could result from this anonymity. Finally, staff has observed instances that combine aspects of the three previous categories to magnify the benefit to both buyers and sellers of protection. For example, a buyer of protection may enter into a private financial arrangement with a reference entity that includes a default requirement, but also work with the reference entity to issue bonds that trade at subpar values. This particular strategy ensures that protection buyers will receive a payout from their CDS contracts, while also increasing the supply of deliverable obligations into the CDS bond auction, lowering the recovery rate, and increasing the guaranteed CDS payout. Sellers, on the other hand, may engage in a private financial arrangement with a reference entity that is designed to move a default beyond the maturity date of the CDS contracts they have sold. At the same time, knowing they've altered the timing of a default, the protection seller may decide to purchase protection that covers the time period into which the default has been pushed. This would allow the seller to continue collecting premiums on contracts that are unlikely to pay out, while simultaneously allowing them to receive a payout when the reference entity eventually defaults in the future. Industry has already begun taking steps to remove some of the incentives to engage in the strategies previously discussed. I hope this podcast about opportunistic strategies in the CDS market has been informative. The Division of Market Oversight will seek to resolve these concerns in close collaboration with staff at the Securities and Exchange Commission and the UK's Financial Conduct Authority. Our joint efforts will include coordinating with ISDA and seeking input from broader market participants, including various service providers, clearing houses, clearing members, prime brokers, and dealers. Our goal is to establish improved standards for the credit derivatives markets that eliminates problematic behaviors and fosters transparency and fairness in our markets. Thank you for watching this podcast. The CFTC is providing this information as a public service, and it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of CFTC policy. Reference to any specific product, service, trademark, manufacturer, or service provider does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by the CFTC. The CFTC is not liable to any consumer or any third party or any direct, indirect, incidental, consequential, special, or exemplary damages for lost profit related to the use of the information provided or referenced in this podcast. Selection of guests on the podcast does not imply an endorsement of any particular individual or entity. Many individuals and entities provide similar services to those of the guest. The views and opinions expressed by the guests in the podcast are their own and not specifically endorsed by the CFTC. Moreover, the information provided in this podcast should not be construed as investment advice. 
Consumers should rely on their own inquiries as to accuracy and relevance of the information incorporated or referenced in this podcast and assume the entire risk related to its use. The CFTC is providing its interpretation of market trends solely to inform the public of a framework for projecting possible outcomes under different scenarios. If you have any questions concerning the meaning or application or a particular law or rule administered by the CFTC, please consult an attorney.